Lady Gaga's fans have turned against her after she posted a medication ad for Pfizer. Demi Lovato is getting ridiculed online because she said she was tired of using they them pronouns. And Amber Heard's new movie is being featured at a film festival right alongside Johnny Depp's. First up, Lady Gaga has been slammed by her own fans for an advertising campaign where she teamed up with Pfizer. The controversy started when she posted an Instagram photo of herself at her Chromatica Ball tour with a huge watermark at the top right corner for the migraine medication Nurtech. Along with that, there were several slides from Pfizer's marketing team detailing safety information, side effects, and general info about the medication. The post came as a shock to a lot of people, even though Lady Gaga has been pretty open about her medical struggles. In the caption, she wrote, Ever since childhood, I've dealt with migraine pain. When I tried Nurtech for the first time, I'll never forget wishing I had found it sooner. That's why I'm proud to partner with Nurtech ODT. We're in this together. If you're ready to speak to a doctor, ask about Nurtech ODT. OTD today. It's safe to say that her fans were not too pleased with this ad and they filled up her comment section with criticism. They accused her of being a disappointing sellout who was only doing the ads because she wanted the money. Not only that, but the fact that this was done during Pride Month seemed to upset people even more. Someone wrote, This is so heartbreaking and disheartening. Not a single post about Pride and the attacks our trans brothers and sisters are suffering. No fan interaction, no music, even the Chromatica ball seems to be shelved and all you guys care about now is money and paid partnerships. This is terribly disappointing. There were even claims on social media that Gaga lost 300,000 followers due to the posting, but that was swiftly debunked by a fan account. Regardless of whether or not her followers agree with the post, the singer has always been super honest when it comes to discussing health. Five years ago, she revealed that she had fibromyalgia, which became so intense that it led to severe pain and several tour cancellations during her music career. Fibromyalgia is a chronic illness that causes pain and tenderness throughout the body. It affects around 4 million adults in the US, but some people still don't view it as an actual medical condition because it can't really be diagnosed through medical testing. People often get diagnosed with it just because it's the only explanation left after doctors have ruled out everything else. Gaga talked about her frustration that some people don't view it as a real disease. She spoke to Vogue and said, I get so irritated with people who don't believe fibromyalgia is real. People need to be more compassionate. Chronic pain is no joke. It's every day waking up to not knowing how you're going to feel. She had revealed that she also suffers from PTSD, which causes physical symptoms. Apparently her diaphragm seizes up, she has a hard time breathing, and her whole body goes into a spasm. She said, that's what it feels like for trauma victims every day, and it's miserable. I always say that trauma has a brain, and it works its way into everything that you do. Though Gaga said she wants to use her story to help others who may be in a similar situation. Now, part of her healing process involves trying to make sure she gives back with that experience instead of locking it away and faking it. The good news is she is making a major return to the big screen in the Joker sequel called Folly Adieu. The movie promises to be a bigger, crazier, and much more musical addition to the Joker universe. And we're gonna be seeing Gaga's transformation into the unhinged psychiatrist Harley Quinn. Whether it's supposed to be a character who eventually becomes Harley Quinn, or it's just meant to distinguish between the previous Margot Robbie version, well, that isn't exactly clear. But we do know that the characters are effectively the same because she's still going to be the psychiatrist who is treating Arthur Fleck. The film is rumored to primarily take place in Arkham Asylum, the famous psychiatric institute that houses villains in the Batman comic books. But the biggest change from the first movie is of course that it's going to be a musical. The rumors were pretty ridiculous at first, but it's since been confirmed that this will either be a musical or at least have a lot of musical elements. And for that reason, it makes total sense that Lady Gaga was cast because with singing, dancing, and acting skills, she's literally a triple threat. The film is set to be released on October 4th next year, so make sure you keep a lookout for that. Now, did you know that Demi Lovato is getting ridiculed online because she said that she was tired of using they them pronouns? Demi switched back to identifying as she, her, in addition to they them, because she got tired of explaining the meaning behind her pronouns. She spoke to GQ Hype Spain and said, I constantly had to educate people and explain why I identified with those pronouns. It was absolutely exhausting. I just got tired, but for that very reason, I know that it's important to continue spreading the word. Demi also said that she wishes for more gender neutral spaces for everyone because she found herself torn over basic amenities like sex assigned bathrooms and government paperwork. She said, I face this every day. For example, in public toilets, having to access the women's bathroom even though I don't completely identify with it. Or it also happens when filling out forms like government documents or any other where you have to specify your gender. You only have two options, male or female. And I feel like none of that makes sense to me. The 
Singer said that she is conditioned to select the option woman because there are just no other options. This is something she wants to change and with time she hopes that there will be more options. Though her statement was met with support from some of her fans, it's safe to say that it also drew a lot of criticism, especially from those in the queer community who called her comments invalidating. There were also some very harsh words for her online and to add to that came homophobic comments claiming that she only used they them pronouns for attention. Just from a quick glance on social media, you can see that there has been a strong negative reaction to the news. Demi came out as non-binary in May of 2021. At the time, she released a statement saying that she'll officially be changing her pronouns to they them. More than a year later though, she decided to add she her back in because she said she'd been feeling more feminine. She went on the Spout podcast in August of 2022 and explained her decision. She acknowledged that no one's perfect and said everyone messes up pronouns at some point, especially when people are learning. It's all about respect. Although she's been very open with people in terms of what she's going through, it hasn't always made her the most popular person in the room. In 2021, she was scrutinized heavily for calling out an LA Froyo shop called The Big Chill. Demi slammed the shop for their apparent pro-diet culture marketing. She posted on her Instagram story, finding it extremely hard to order Froyo from The Big Chill when you have to walk past tons of sugar-free cookies slash other diet foods before you get to the counter. Do better, please. She referenced the company's phrase, eat me guilt-free, and wrote, this screams diet culture and I won't be gaslit by the media or anyone else that says otherwise. This debacle only got worse when the internet took the side of the Froyo shop and Demi was hit with so much backlash that she eventually posted an Instagram live trying to defend her decision to her followers, but to no avail. And then a few months later, she went viral again for her comments about extraterrestrial life. When talking about her docuseries on Peacock called Unidentified with Demi Lovato, she said, I think we have to stop calling them aliens because aliens is a derogatory term for anything. That's why I like to call them ETs. She also claimed to have been abducted at one point in time. Although some of her fans found the whole thing funny, others were a little more concerned about her mental health. And that's the other thing. A lot of the hate against Demi seems to be a dig at her history with substance use. The singer's journey to sobriety has been very well documented over the years. Her battle with addiction was actually a lot darker and scarier than most people realize. The incident in 2018 almost ended her life and left her with long-term health complications. In her documentary, Dancing with the Devil, she revealed that she was left with irreparable brain damage and she will forever have to deal with the effects of that for the rest of her life. It caused three strokes, a heart attack and organ failure. She had pneumonia from asphyxiating on her own vomit. When she woke up in the hospital's intensive care unit, she said she was legally blind. It took about two months to recover enough eyesight for her just to read a book and that never fully went away. These days, she said she can't even drive a car because of the blind spot she has on her vision. In the hospital, she was administered with an emergency antidote, but the doctors believed that she only had five to 10 more minutes to live. In the documentary, Demi said, I dealt with a lot of the repercussions and I feel like they are still there to remind me of what could happen if I ever get into a dark place again. I'm grateful for those reminders, but I'm so grateful I was someone that didn't have to do a lot of rehabbing. The rehabbing came on the emotional side. She recognizes that her issues with substance use will be a lifelong battle and that's something that she works at every single day. Of course, Demi still has her dark moments from time to time, but she also has come a long way spiritually and emotionally. Since that fateful incident, she said she's learned to love herself and do things that contribute to her health and happiness. All right, now, will you be lining up to support Amber Heard's new movie? Despite the recent rumors, no, she has not actually quit Hollywood. Although the past year has been pretty chaotic for her, she is stepping right back into the spotlight as a star of an all new film called In the Fire. The movie will premiere at the upcoming 69th Taramina Film Festival in Sicily and she will be there for the screening. The psychological thriller is set in 1899, where Amber plays a 38-year-old American psychiatrist as she arrives on a rich farm in Colombia after being called to solve the case of a disturbed child following increasingly insistent accusations that that child is the devil. While the woman tries to psychoanalyze the child, the nefarious events intensify and her cure becomes a race to save the little boy from the fury of his fellow citizens and perhaps even from himself. According to the filmmakers, they approach the project with an emphasis on love and the triumph of love over hate in a fight for salvation. The film is mixed with both magic and realism, and it's set to deal with the themes of finding love and salvation in moments where it seems to be gone. This also marks the first major film role for Amber after the highly publicized defamation trial with Johnny Depp. As we know, the jury largely did not rule in her favor, and things ended in such a bad way for Amber that she left the country and moved to Spain. It's since been theorized that she would not be able to continue working in Hollywood, given the controversy that 
came from the trial. But just like we've seen at the Cannes Film Festival, Johnny Depp has made an effort to move on from last year's chaos. He's been taking up new film projects and making it crystal clear that he's getting back in the game. Now it looks like Amber is trying to do the same as well. But the festival's decision to include both of their films has ignited a firestorm online. Johnny's supporters accuse the festival of endorsing an alleged liar and manipulator. They argue that the festival is choosing sides against him by featuring her movie, given the allegations and counter allegations that went on between them. Whereas those supporting Amber's inclusion emphasize the need to stand with survivors and get Hollywood to try and take a unified stance against DV. But the hate is not all that one sided anymore. When Johnny made his red carpet return at Cannes, legions of Amber Heard supporters took to social media to protest his slow return to the spotlight. Prior to the festival's opening, they launched an online campaign with hashtag CansYouNot to call out everyone giving him a platform. Eve Barlow, a journalist and friend of Amber Heard, initially shared the CansYouNot hashtag to Instagram. She made a post condemning the festival for supporting his film. The CansYouNot campaign has also spread throughout Twitter, and it's since drawn a lot of attention back to the trial. There is still hope that both Johnny and Amber will be able to finally move on from this. But the fact that it's still following both of them one full year later just tells you how massive the cultural impact really was. So who do you support in going forward with their careers? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.